In this video, I wanted to show you the next things you can do with this project once you get uh, your eight drum tracks put in. First of all, let me explain. Uh, in this column on the left, these are what we call track headers. A track is this horizontal line that moves across your workspace. And within, on each track header, there are uh, several things to look at. First, you have the name of the track, which in this case is example one. And then you have these buttons down here on the track. This first one is the volume control. So if you want to adjust the volume on a single track, you can click on this, move your mouse up or down, and change the volume of the track. This button, actually all these that are clicked right now, are what are mute buttons. So if I'm working with a single track and I want to hear only this track, I can click on these small pair of headphones. This is called the solo button. So if I click on that button, what it does is it mutes all the other tracks. So the only track I'm listening to is this one. Next to that is the mute button. So it does just the opposite as a solo button. So if I didn't want to hear this track, I would click on the mute button and then it would mute only this track. So that's your track header. And those are the three controls that uh, you're probably going to use the most right now. Uh, this is what's called the record enable. Um, you don't need to worry about that just now. And this is what's called the automation button. And we're not going to use that right now either. Um, I will share, you may notice these three buttons in the upper right hand corner of the track. If you ever have a track added and you want to get rid of it, if you click on those three buttons, you'll get a pop-up menu. And from that, you have the option here to delete that track. Okay, so that's your track header and some of the options to consider uh, with your track header. Now, once you have your one measure drum track set up, the next thing to do is to extend that drum track. So in music, music really likes to work in groups of four. So most of music likes to be in like four measures or eight measures or 16 measures. So music likes fours and multiples of four. So with the drums, I can extend this out to create a four measure loop. Now, one way I can do this, and I'm gonna come down here and hit my zoom button so we can get in a little closer. There are two different ways to copy and paste uh, these sounds. So each of these colored boxes are what are called regions. And the regions contain either what we call MIDI data or audio. So I can duplicate this region in one of two different ways. The first way is if you look at your computer keyboard on the bottom row near your space bar is an option button. If you press the option button and hold it down, then click on the center of the region, drag the region to where you want it, then drop it, then let go of the option button. It'll automatically copy and paste the region. That's called the option click, drag and drop. Now, if you want to get rid of a region, you click on it to highlight it and then just press your delete button. The other way you can copy and paste is if you take your cursor and put it in the region and then move it to the upper right hand corner of the region, you'll see that the arrow changes into this little circle with an arrow on it. Once that shows up, if you click and drag, it'll also duplicate the region that way. So notice with this that I just copied that out for three measures. And the reason I did this is because with drums, that last measure of a drum phrase a lot of times contains something that's called a turnaround or sometimes it's called a drum fill. So to create that drum fill, what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna solo the track and then I'm gonna move my playhead over here to the fourth measure by clicking on the four. 
And once I have my playhead in place, I'm then going to come over and click on the edit drop down button. Once I click on edit, I'm going to move down and select create region. And when I select create region, I'm going to get a new empty region that pops up here. Once I'm in that region, I'm going to select it and click on my patterns beat maker. So here, I'm going to create the turnaround or the drum fill. And to do that, I'm going to add some instruments. So first, I'm going to add, and then I'm going to click on this arrow, and I'm going to add a high tom. Let's try that again. And then I'm going to add another one and make this a mid tom. I'm going to add another one for a low tom. And then finally, I'm going to add a crash. So, and what I'm going to do here is is add some notes. Uh, this is showing up in the wrong place. Okay. Well, so I wanted this to appear up here, but you see it enter actually entered it down here. Now, I can use my editing tools to move this up to my example one track. So first, I'm going to click on this region and delete it. Then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hold my option key. I'm going to click on this region <laughs> and drag it up here and drop it. Then I'm going to come down here, click on my three dots and delete that track. So now I have a four measure drum track where I've added a turnaround at the end. And that's going to sound like this. Okay. Now, the other thing that you can do with this project is remember that you can change the, the sound of the instrument that you're using. So if I click on this little instrument button at the beginning of the track header, I can come down here and I can change the drum sound that I'm using. So for this, I think I'll use the 70s drum set. So now if I go back and listen to this again, okay. So once you do that, <coughs> keep in mind too, that if you want to make any changes, like I didn't like that exactly the way I had it. So let me adjust that a little bit. Now I'll go back and listen to that again. And notice this purple bar up here. Anytime I have that patterns beat maker on, that's going to default to a one measure pattern, a one measure cycle. Because remember, you're looking at just one measure here. So to get rid of that, I'm going to X out. So now I have this. Let's listen to it now. So now I have my extended drum track. So once you've completed all these drum tracks, go through and experiment with the different drum sounds that you could use for these tracks. And then you can also go through and use those copy tools that I showed you to extend these out to three measures and work on creating these turnarounds at the end. So that you can add those drum turnarounds in.
Okay. If you need help, always turn your light on, raise your hand, get my attention, and I'll be glad to come help you. Uh, again, this project is due by Friday. And hopefully on Friday, we've got some folks that have created some things that maybe you will want to share uh, with other people in the class. So I hope you're having fun. And I look forward to hearing what you create.